Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, Inner Harbor, Chapter 13. No one had ever treated her the way Philip Quinn had treated her, so Bill couldn't decide what she thought of that, much less what to do about it. He'd been rough, careless, demanding. He had, in his own words, ravished her in more than once, though she couldn't claim to have put up even what would, could, could remotely be termed a struggle. It had been a long way from civilized seduction. Never in her life had she slept with a man she'd known for such a short time. To do so was reckless, potentially dangerous, and certainly irresponsible. Even factoring in the overwhelming and unprecedented chemistry between them, it was foolish behavior. Worse than foolish, she admitted, because she was very much wanted to be reckless with him again. <laughs> she would have to consider the matter carefully as soon as she could get her mind off her body and the incredible pleasure it had experienced under those fast take charge hands. Now he's sailing her back to the waterfront at St. Christopher's, completely at ease with himself and with her. She never would have guessed he'd just spent more than an hour engaged in wild, frantic sex. She hadn't been a party to it. There was no doubt in her mind that they'd, what they'd done would further complicate an already horrible, complicated situation. Both of them would have to be coldly sensible now and carefully practical. She did her best to tidy her damp, tangled hair as the wind whipped at it. Conversation she decided to bridge the gap between sex and sensuality. How did you get the scars? Which ones? He tossed the question over his shoulder, but he thought he knew most women wanted to know. On your chest. They look surgical. Mm, long story. This time he drew, threw a smile back with a look. I'll bore you with it tonight. Tonight? Oh, he just loved it when our bros buckled together, forming that little concentration line between them. We have a date, remember? But I, hmm, I confuse the hell out of you, don't I? Nor she slapped at the hair then and insisted on blowing up her eyes. And you enjoy that, darling. I can't begin to tell you how much. You keep trying to slip me into one of your slots, Bill, and I'll keep sliding back out again. You figure on a fairy, fairly safe, one-dimensional urban professorly urban professional who likes his wine aged and his women cultured, but that's only part of the picture. As he entered the harbor, he dropped the sails, switched to motor. First glance, you, I have to figure well-bred, well-educated, career-ordinated city woman who loved, likes her wine white and her men at a safe distance. But that's only part of the picture, too. He cut the engine, let the boat pump gently a dock, gave her hair a friendly tug before he climbed out the secure lines. I think we'll both be well and entertained while we uncover the rest of the canvas. A continuation of physical relationship is inevitable. We finish it off with our hand. Let's not waste time or energy pretending otherwise. We can call a basic chemistry for now. He tugged her to him the minute her feet hit the dock and proved his point with one log fire kiss. It works for me. Your family won't approve. Family approves. Proof was important to you. Of course. I don't discount it either. Normally, this wouldn't be any of their business. In this case, it is. It bothered him more than a little. But it's my family and my concern, not yours. This may sound hypocritical at this point, but I don't want to do anything else that will hurt or disturb Seth. Neither do I, but I'm not going to let a ten-year-old take charge of my personal life. Relax, Bill. He skimmed his fingers over to This isn't the Montagues and the Capulets. I'm hardly thinking of you as Romeo. She said so dryly that he laughed and kissed her again. My darling, if I put my mind to it. But for now, let's just be who we are. You're tired. He rubbed his thumb gently on her. You've got thin skin, to build the shadow show. Go take a nap. We can make do with room service later. With? I'll bring the wine. He said cheerfully. Lead back into the boat. I've got a bottle of Chate Oliver I've been wanting to sample. He shouted over the motor. No need to dress up. He added with a wicked grin as he maneuvered the boat away from the dock and out of earshot. She wasn't sure what she would have shouted at him if she'd lost what was left of her control. Instead, she stood on the dock in a wrinkled but elegant silk suit, her hair damp mess and her dignity as shaky as her heart. Cam recognized the signs. A fast sail on a breezy afternoon might relax a man, loosen his muscles, clear his mind, but he only knew one thing that put that lazy, satisfied gleam in a man's eyes. <laughs> he recognized that gleam in his brother Phil's eyes when Philip slid up the dock to toss him the lines. You son of a bitch! was his first thought? Caught on the stern line and yanked it to, You son of a bitch! Philip often... Philip only lifted his eyebrows. 
He'd been expecting that reaction, though not quite so quickly. He already ordered himself to hold on to his temper. Explain his position. Always a friendly welcome, Matt the Quinns. I figured you were past the stage when you thought with your dick. Not quite as calm as he planned to be, Philip stepped off the boat, some facing his brother. He recognized the sounds, too. Cain was spoiling for a fight. Actually, I tend to let my dick think for itself, though we often agree. You're either stupid or crazy, you, or you just don't give a damn. A kid's life is in the balance here. His peace of mind is trust. Nothing's gonna happen to Seth. I'm doing everything I can to make sure of that. Oh, I get a you fucked her for his sake. Philip's hand shot out. And before that bright furry fully registered, he had them gripped on Cam's jacket. Now they were face their faces were close and both were warrior hard. You were tearing up the sheets with Anna last spring. How much were you thinking about Seth when you had her under you? Cam's first fist rammed up under Philip's guard. The blow rocked his head back, but then loosened his hold. Instinct blanked out raising as he shoved Cam back and prepared to tear in. He swore viciously when Ethan clamped an arm around his throat from behind. Cool off. <clears throat> Eats an order, ordered on a more of a sigh than a snarl. Both of you, or I'll toss you in until you do. He tightened his hold on Philip's windpipe, just enough to show he meant it. It's crowded camp. Get a order of yourself, damn it. Seth's having a rough day. You want to add to it? No, I don't want to add to it. Can't say really. This one doesn't give a damn, but I do. <sighs> my relationship with Sil, Sibyl, and my concern for Seth are two separate matters. Like, oh, let go of me, Ethan. Because Philip's tone was cool and deliberate, ease and release. You know, Cam, I don't remember being so interested. I don't remember you being so interested in my sex life since we both had our sights set on Jenny Marlowe. We're not in high school anymore, pal. No, we're not. And you're not my keeper. Either of you. He had it shifting so that he could look at both of them. He would explain himself because it mattered. Because they mattered. I've got feelings for her. And I'm going to take the time to figure out the, what they are. I made a lot of changes in my life over the last few months. And I've got along. We've gone along with what the two of you wanted. But God damn it. I'm entitled to a personal life. I wouldn't argue with that, Phil. Ethan glanced toward the house, hoping Seth was busy with his homework or his drawings, not, and not spying out the window. I don't know how Seth's going to feel about this part of your personal life. There's something none of you are taking into consideration. So, Bill, it's Seth's aunt. That's exactly what I am taking into consideration. She's Gloria's sister, and she came in here on a lie. She came in here believing a lie. It was an important distinction, Philip thought. A vital dis distinction. Did you read the statement? She faxed Anna. Cam hits between his teeth, who can stomach his mark. Yeah, I saw it. What do you think it cost her to put that down in black and white? To know everybody in town would be talking about it. About her within 24 hours. Philip waited to beat. <laughs> Though the muscle in Cam's jaw relaxed fractionally. How much more do you want her to pay? I'm not thinking about her, I'm thinking about Seth. And she's the best defense we've got against the glory of the Lightner. If you think she'll stand up to it, even when push comes to shove. Yeah, I do. He needs his family. All his family. That's what Dad would want. He told me, catching himself, Phil Brown out over dark water. Camp first slits, steady look with Ethan, and nearly smiled. Been feeling a little odd lately, Philip. I'm fine. <laughs> Maybe you're stressed out some. Since he'd only gotten in one punch, Cam felt a side of joy himself. Thought I saw you talking to yourself a couple times. <laughs> I don't talk to myself. Maybe you think you're talking to someone who isn't there. He did smile now, widely and quickly. Stress is killer. He's just mine. He didn't think I could follow a chuckle. Philip got him. You got something to say about the state of You got something to say about the state of my mental health? <laughs> Well, Ethan scratches. You've been looking a little tense lately. For Christ's sake, I'm entitled to look a little tense. He threw out his arms as if to encompass the world that too often weighed on his world. I put ten, twelve hours a day in Baltimore and come down here and sweat like a goddamn galley slave in the boat yard. That's when I'm not frying my brains with books and the bills or playing housewife at the grocery store, making sure Seth doesn't slide out of his homework. Always was, bitchy. Cam mumbled. You want bitchy? Phil took one threat step forward. This time Cam grinned and spread his hands. Ethan, Ethan will just toss you off the dock. Me, I don't feel like I swim just now. Fine. First, first two times was me. I thought I was dreaming. 
confused, unsure if he wanted a punch game. Or a few times with me, I thought I was dreaming. Confused, unsure if he wanted a punch game or just sit down for a while. Philip looked back at Ethan. What the hell are you talking about? I thought we were discussing your mental health. Ethan Stone was mild, conversational now. It was good to see him. Hard to know you'll have to let him go again, but it was worth it. Chill dance up Philip's spine. <laughs> but I stood on steady hands safely as mine. <laughs> Maybe we should talk about your mental health. <laughs> we figured what when it was your turn. Legs dangling, say got off the car. It's your turn. Your turn. Looks like he took this in the same order he took us in. So symmetry. Camp decided to drop him down beside Ethan. He'd have liked the symmetry of it. I talked to him the first day. First time the day I met Anna. He thought back to it. The way he'd seen her across the back lawn. The not out face in the ugly suit. I guess there's a kind of symmetry too. The chill was stand still dancing. Tapping fast now up and down. Feels like, what do you mean? Talked to him. <laughs> Had a conversation. Came plucked the cigar out of Ethan's mouth and helped himself to Of course, I figured I cracked. He glanced up, smiled. You figured you cracked, Phil. No, I've just been working too hard. <sighs> Shit. Drawing pictures, coming up with jingles. Big deal. Kiss ass. <laughs> what was the size said on this? Are the two of you trying to tell me you've talked to Dad? The one who died in March. The one we buried a few miles from here. An easy gesture came past Philip the cigar. You trying to doze? You haven't. I don't believe in that sort of thing. Doesn't much matter what you believe when it happens. Ethan pointed out and took back his cigar. Last time I saw him was the night I asked Grace to marry me. He had a bag of peanuts. Christ Jesus, Philip no Muller. I could smell them the same way I could smell the cigar smoke. The water came the leather jacket. When people die, that's it. He don't come back. Phil paused a moment. Wait till the cigar came back down the line. Did you touch him? <laughs> Cam Angle said, They do. He was solid. He couldn't be. It's either that, he's important out, or we're all crazy. We barely had time to say goodbye and no time to understand it. Cam let out a breath. He grew his grief had eased and softened. He bought us each a little more time, that's what I think. He and Mom bought us all the time when bought us all the time when they made us coins. You can think about it, Phil decided not now at any rate. Must have ripped him when he found out he had a daughter he'd never known. He'd have wanted to help her save her. He's a mummer. He he'd have seen it was too late for her, but not for Seth. Came came concluded. So he had done whatever he could to do to save Seth. His grandson, Phil, watched an air get sore and slide silently into the dark, and he was no longer cool. He'd have seen himself in the eyes, but he wouldn't want his answers. I've been thinking about that. A logical step would have been for him to try to locate Glory's mother, have her confirm it. It would have taken time, Ken, because she's married, she's living in Europe, and from what Sibyl said, she wasn't interested in contacting him. And he ran out of time, Phil. But now we know. And now... We make it stick. She hadn't meant to sleep, so Bill indulged in a long, hot shower and wrapped herself in a robe with the intentions of adding to her notes. She ordered herself to drum up the courage to call her mother, to speak to her mind, and to make a written corroboration of her own notarized statement. She did neither. Instead, she fell face down on the bed, closed her eyes, and escaped. The knocking at the door pulled her up. Pulled her out of sleep into groggy. She stumbled out of bed, fumbled for the light switch. With her mind still fuzzy, she walked through the parlor and barely had the presence of mind to check the people. She had a self-directed, annoyed sigh as she flipped hope off the lock. Philip took one look at her tousled hair, sleepy eyes, and practical navy trailer robe and smiled. Well, I did tell you not to dress up. I'm sorry, I fell asleep. Distracted, she pushed out her hair. She hated being must, particularly when he looked so fresh and alert and gorgeous. If you're tired, I'll take a rain check. No, I... If I sleep any more now, I'll end up a wide awake at 3 a.m. I hate hotel rooms at 3 a.m. She stepped back to let him in. I'll just get dressed and stay comfortable. He suggested and used his free hand to cut the nap of her neck and bring her forward for a casual kiss. I've already seen you naked. And a very appealing sight it was. <laughs> It appeared she decided that her dignity was still just out of reach. I'm not going to claim that was a mistake. Good. Except the wine he carried on her coffee table. 
but she said with what she considered admirable patience neither was it wise we're both sensible people speak for yourself doc i stop feeling sensible every time i get a whiff of you what is it that you wear she leaned back when he leaned in to sniff at her philip <laughs> so bill <laughs> how about if i attempt to be civilized and i cart you off the bed until you're a little more awake i appreciate your restraint she said tightly and so you should hungry what is this almost pathological need of your horse to feed me you're the analyst he told her i've got the wine you've got some glasses she might have sighed but it wouldn't have been constructive she did want to talk to him to put the relationship on an even footing again to ask his advice and she hoped to enlist his hope in persuading seth to accept her friendship she took the two short, thick glasses the hotel provided, lifting her eyebrow. When <laughs> Philip sneered at them, he had a damn sexy sneer. They're an insult to this very delicate wine. The life of wine, he said as he opened the bottle with the stainless steel corkscrew he brought with him. But if they're the best you can offer, we'll just have to make do. I forgot to pack my warfred. Next time, he poured the pretty straw-colored wine into the glasses, handed one to beginnings, middle, and endings. We seem to be at all three. Which means the trades ended, the teamwork is established, and we just became lovers. I'm happy with all three aspects of our very interesting relationship. <laughs> teamwork? She picked the aspect that didn't shame her or make her nervous. Sasa Quinn, with your help, we'll make the legal and permanent and soon. She stared down at her one. It's important to you that he have your name? <laughs> His grandfather's name, Phil cracked it, and it can't be nearly as important to me as it is to Seth. Yes, you're right. I saw his face when I told him. He looked almost awed. Professor Quinn must have been an extraordinary man. My parents were special. They had the kind of marriage you rarely see, a true partnership based on trust, respect, love, and passion. It hasn't been easy wondering if my father broke that trust. <laughs> You're afraid that he had cheated on your mother with Gloria, fathered her child with her. So Bill sat down. It was hideous of her to plant that seed. It was also hell living with the seeds in me that I couldn't quite stomp out. Resentment for Seth. Was he my father's son, his true son, while I was just one of the substitutes? I knew better. He had a episode in my heart. It was one of those mind games that nag at you at three in the morning. If nothing else, he realized he eased his mind on that one point, but it wasn't enough. I'm going to ask my mother to corroborate my statement in writing. I don't know that she will. I doubt that she will. So Bill added, but I'll ask. I'll try. Teamwork, see? He took her hand in it, nuzzled it, which had her turning her head to study him warmly. Your jaw's bruised. <laughs> yeah, he grimaced wiggling. Cam still has a damn sneaky lap. He hit you? <laughs> the absolute shock in her voice made him laugh. Obviously, she... The good doctor didn't come from a world of I was going to hit him first, but he beat me to it, which means I owe him one. I'd have paid him back then and there, but Ethan got me in a chokehold. <laughs> oh, God. Swamped with the stress, she got to read. This was about us, about what happened today on the boat. Should never have happened. I knew it would come true between you and your family. Yes, he said it was about us, and we worked it out. Spill, my brothers and I have been pounding on each other as long as we've been brothers. It's a Quinn family tradition, like my father's waffle recipe. The stress continued to rifle through her, but confusion ran with it. Fist and waffles, she wondered, pulling a hand through her distorted hair. You fight with them physically? Sure. To try to compute it, she pressed her fingers to her temples. It didn't help it. Why? He, he considered smiling. Because they're there, he suggested. And your parents allowed this type of violent behavior. My mother was a pediatrician. She always stitched us up. He leaned forward for himself more one. I think I'd better explain the whole picture. You know, the Cam Ethan and I are adopted. Yes, I did some research before I came. She trailed off, glanced back at her laptop. Well, you know that already. <laughs> yeah, and you know some of the facts, but not the meaning. You asked me about my scars. It doesn't start there, he mused. Not really. Cam was the first. Ray caught him trying to steal my mother's car one morning. <laughs> her car? Steal a car? <laughs> right out of the driveway. He was 12. He'd run away from home and was planning to go on, on to Mexico. <laughs> At 12, he was still in cars with plans to go to Mexico? That's right. The first of the Quinn bad boys. He lifted his glass to toast his absence. He'd been beaten again by his drunk father, and he figured it was time to run or die. Oh, she placed a hand on the arm of the sofa as she lowered herself again. He passed out, and my father carried him inside. My mother treated him. They didn't call the police? No, Cam was terrified. My mom 
My mother recognized the signs of conditional physical abuse. They made inquiries, arrangements, worked with the system, and circumvented it, and they gave him a home. They just made him their son? My mother said once that we were all hers already. We just hadn't found each other before. Then there was Ethan. His mother was a hooker in Baltimore, a junkie. She relieved boredom by knocking him around, and then she got the bright idea that she could supplement her income by selling her eight-year-old son to perverts. So Bill clutched her glass in both hands and rocked. She said nothing. Could say nothing. He had a few years of that. One night, one of her customers finished with Ethan and with her and got violent. Since his target was her and not her kids, she objected. She stabbed him. She ran, and when the cops got there, they took Ethan to the hospital. My mother was doing guest rounds. They took him, too, so Bill murmured. Yeah, that's the long and short of it. She raised her glass, sipped slowly, watching him over the rim. She didn't know the world he was describing. Logically, she knew it existed, but it never touched hers until now. And you? My mother worked the block in Baltimore. Strip joints, turn tricks on the side. A little bait and switch now and then, some sort short cons. My father was long gone. He did some time at Jessup for an armed robbery. And when he got out, he didn't look us up. Did she? Did she beat you? Now and then, until I got big enough, strong enough, that it, that she worried I might hit back. He smiled since her. She was right to worry. We didn't care for each other much, but if I wanted a roof over my head, and I did, I needed her, and I had to pull my weight. I picked pockets, lifted locks. I was pretty good at it. Hell, he said it was faint stare pride. I was damn good at it. Still stuck with small shit, the kind you turn into easy cash or drugs. Things were really tight. I sold myself. He saw her eyes widen and sharp. I looked away from his. Survival's not always pretty, he said shortly. Most of the time I had my freedom, I was tough, and I was mean, and I was smart. Maybe I got picked up once in a while and rattled through the system, but I always popped out again. Another few years of that life, not I've been a Jessup or the morgue. Another few years of that life, he continued, watching her face, and says would have gone the same way. Struggling to sort it, she stared into her eye. You see, your situations is similar, but... I recognize Gloria yesterday, you interrupted. Pretty woman gone brittle, hard and sharp at the eyes, bitter at the mouth. She and my mother would have recognized each other, too. <laughs> what could she say? How could she argue when she'd seen the same thing, felt the same? I didn't recognize her, she said for a moment. I thought there was a mistake. She recognized you when she played the angles, pushed the buttons. She'd know how. He paused my She'd know exactly how. So do I. She looked at him then, noting he was studying her coolly. Is that what you're doing? Pushing buttons, playing angles? <laughs> Maybe he was. He thought they would both have to figure that out before much. Right now, I'm answering your question. Do you want to rest? Yes. D didn't hesitate. For she discovered she very much wanted to hear it all. When I was 13, I thought I had it handled. I figured I was just fine. So I found myself face down in the gutter, bleeding to death. <sighs> Drive by shooting. Wrong place, wrong time. Shot? Her gaze went back. To, you were shot? <laughs> In the chest. Probably should have killed me. One of the doctors who made sure I didn't die knew Stella Quinn. She and Ray came to see me in the hospital. Figured them for weirdos. Do-gooders. You're basic assholes. Played, I played along with them. My mother was done with me, and I was going to end up solid in the system. I thought I'd use them until I was steady on my feet again. Then I'd take what I needed and cut out. It was this boy you described her, and how was she so... How, how was she to reconcile him with the man beside her? You were going to rob them? <laughs> it's what I did, what I was, but they... How to explain, he wondered, the miracle of them. They just wore that away, until I fell in love with them. So I'd have done anything, been anything to make them proud of me. It wasn't the paramedics or the surgical team that saved my life. I was Ray Stella Quinn. How old were you when they took you in? Thirteen. But I wasn't a kid like Seth. I wasn't a victim like Cam and Ethan. I made my choices. <laughs> You're wrong. For the first time, she reached out, taking his face in her hands. She kissed him gently. He lifted his hand to her wrist. <laughs> had to concentrate on not squeezing her skin the way that soft kiss had squeezed his heart. That's not the reaction I expected. It wasn't the one she expected to have. She found herself filled pity for the boy, he described, to her admiration for the man he made himself into. What reaction do you usually get? I've never told anyone outside the family he managed my bad for the image. Touch, she rested her forehead against his. 
You're right. It could have been Seth. Remember, what happened to you? It could have been Seth. Your father saved him from that. You and your family saved him. While well, mine's done nothing. Worse than nothing. You doing something? I hope it's enough. When his mouth came to her, she let herself slide into comfort. End of chapter 13.